probably made a video talking about this particular topic before, but this is one heel, this is one sword that I fall on, this is one thing that I adamantly believe in. When it comes to sex with women, between men and women, that feminism, social programming, and the way religiosity pushes narratives about sexuality, and these different things that people encounter, Madonna horror complexes, uh, different systems such as consumerism and how consumerism is built on playing through the emotions of women and men, uh, women using their sexual desirability to cause men who don't have sexual options to be willing to uh, accrue those different things so that they have the ability to have access to those women sexually. That's something that feeds the economy. But a big aspect of holding these things together, and something I'll also say as well, like I'm somebody who is sex positive, but you can be sex positive and understand that somebody's going to like what they're going to like and that that doesn't make them a bad person. And you can understand that love is love. And anywhere that two people find love, that's a beautiful thing. But you can look at that and you can still look at the fact that there is an LGBT agenda. There is. Now... I believe that feminism along with social programming, socialism, the LGBT, you know, agenda, how this affects topics around sexuality is this narrative being pushed that somewhere between 33 to 11% of women are re able to regularly have orgasms having sex with men. And they try to use this as a way of demeaning and putting down masculinity in order to say that men aren't uh, good lovers. Now, there are many men who aren't. There are many men out there who are sexually selfish or who don't have the equipment to, you know, give women vaginal orgasms or at least don't have the knowledge of how to do it. But a big aspect of it is either that the women that the how women choose men, how women choose men. So a lot of times women choose men on a basis of emotional comfort. When you're with somebody and having sex with them on a basis of them making you emotionally comfortable instead of desiring to be dominated instead of desiring to be feminine and submissive with that man but saying that you want him to to prove himself to you then what happens is that if you have certain mental blocks in the way of creating vaginal orgasms or if you have this certain fear of losing control and the way that your relationship dynamic is set up is that you want to maintain control then often what will happen is that a woman will either purposefully find a man who she's not sexually attracted to on a level to where it will threaten her ability to control the sexual aspect of the relationship or she will repress her sexuality while she's dealing with a man who does have that capacity and then just you know try to beg him to stop she's getting closer you know try to you know basically shit test him or just really let him know that okay these are my boundaries you know these are my limits this is pushing it too far and you know, I, I try not to deal with women who have that type of mindset or that type of behavior, but that's why I believe in the biology first approach. It's a lot easier to bypass that social programming when you come at a woman from the jump. You know, for, for different women, I've been the first guy that they had vaginal orgasms with or the first guy that they had clitoral orgasms with as far as oral sex. I've been, you know, the, the first guy women have had multiple orgasms with. You know, when you've had these type of experiences, one thing that you begin to learn especially if you learn these things from game and you learn these things from mindset you know the difference between when I wasn't given vaginal orgasms and all I could do was just give a woman clitoral orgasms from head and I had crazy stamina back then I could fuck for hours <laughs> you know I could get into it a little bit you know what I mean but I didn't quite understand domination I didn't quite understand dominance and submission. I didn't quite understand the way that permeating your sexual energy before approaching a woman sexually is necessary. And that you need to approach a woman sexually to make sure that that's a priority on her mind when you first interact with her. And when I began to understand these things, I would be the guy where a woman would be in relationship styles that mirror the way the society says you should do things where the guy would pursue the woman on end and then you know he would pursue her and he would give her a level of attention she never had before and then she would grow attached to that attention that validation that comfort that he's given her but she's not quite yet aware of herself sexually not quite uh, uh, sexually awakened so because she's in that situation she represses her sexuality either out of fear that if she truly taps into it it'll change the dynamic of that relationship in a negative way or she represses it to keep herself from cheating on the guy or she's just just not aware of it 
just not aware of it. And sometimes what will happen is a woman will be in that relationship with a guy for years, never have an orgasm from, you know, vaginal stimulation or penetration. And in other instances, in most of those instances that I hear of women only have uh, orgasms from a dude giving them head, right? And when they come across a guy, usually in a rebound situation, this is what I call let that hurt go pussy. And it'll be a rebound in the situation, especially if the guy's on the rebound too, or if he's just already a dom, if he's already into like BDSM, he's already on the sexual scene. Guy's skilled, packing, you know what I mean? Knows how to talk to her a certain way. Then he unlocks something in her, he breaks her in. You know, there have been women I dealt with that when I, when I broke them in, it was a situation where we were having sex and I was extremely dominant with them. Like, I remember one instance, it was the first time having sex with this woman. She's been with bigger guys, she's been with smaller guys, she's been with a variety of guys. But I grabbed her by the back, we, we were flirting for a while, you know, I told her, you know, I don't give a fuck about these people in here, right? You know, I don't, right? And, you know, I played in the hair, played with her titties, you know, I act like I was, you know, fake touching it, and I was like, no, nah, I ain't no bitch, I just grabbed it. And I looked her right in the eye, and I took her in the bathroom. And I grabbed her by the back of her neck like a fucking pit bull puppy. And I said, as long as you in this bathroom, you're my bitch. Fucked her till she bled. She wasn't on her period. But usually what happens in these instances is once a woman gives into that domination, usually the first time that it happens, there's a little bit of blood that's going to come out. I almost see that as the, the second the second uh, hymen or the, the, the second uh, cherry, right? Or the second virginity. That's when a woman truly begins to be sexually awakened. And that's usually when a woman gets stigmatized. You know, situations that I had that have gone that particular way, women would be on my nuts for, for months or however long a situation lasts. And for whatever reason, those didn't work out. That wasn't because of their sexual history because of me or nothing like that. You know, there was a pretty non-judgmental view when it came to how I approached the topic of sex. But at the same time, it's like what these, these feminist narratives do is they tell this one lie. They say, oh, doctors say that the G-spot doesn't exist. Oh, the do uh, they say, okay, the clitoral legs are a lot bigger than just the, the clit. I mean, the clitoral legs and the overall clitoral body is a lot bigger than the overall clit that sticks out. So if a woman has what appears to be a vaginal orgasm, that's just a clitoral orgasm. And then they don't address any of the other spots that are any of the other erogenous zones. And basically what feminists do and what these socialist type of people do is they take the mindset of what it what it's called to be a uh, they take the mindset of a vagina is basically for the purposes of getting pregnant and giving birth and then they push the narrative that getting pregnant and giving birth isn't a good thing either necessarily unless that's just something you already want to do. But some will push against that as well. So, you know, I just want to focus on my career. I just want to focus on my life. You know, I don't have enough time for that right now. And then you might get too old to have kids without having an exorbitant amount of money. You may not have, you know, the options to, to get a man who is willing to begin to take you seriously if you're not already open to having children. So kind of what it does is it, it puts relationships back some it puts relationships back some but when we're looking at this topic yes the clitoral body is bigger than just the head right the clitoral body does go down into the roots around the vulva right but another thing is that the g-spot is not just the clitoral legs the g-spot is the skein's gland which is homologous to the prostate gland like when i talk about sexuality and anatomy i like to look at it from a standpoint of certain things are homologous if you've ever seen or been around gay men, if you have gay friends, me, like I said, I'm sex positive, so I will have conversations about sexuality with anybody. I'm not uncomfortable having a conversation with a gay man about sex. I'm not uncomfortable having a conversation with a lesbian about having sex with a lesbian. I'm not uncomfortable with any of that because it doesn't challenge my own sexuality. I'm comfortable with my sexuality. So it's one of those things to where if we're having that type of conversation, one thing that you'll notice in your observations and one thing you may learn in conversations is that and just through anatomy I'm gonna touch on anatomy and through conversations anecdotal evidence is that oftentimes for a woman she wants to base the primary place that she wants to receive pleasure from is her clitoris if she's highly socially programmed the clitoris is a beautiful thing has eight to nine thousand you know nerve endings in it you know I, I love the clit I eat the pussy I use vibrators I do all that stuff you know, I play with it, you know, I do whatever. But 
I do not think that it is wise to base the foundation of your sexual chemistry for a long-term relationship with somebody on the foundation that you give each other or that at least that you give her good oral sex. It's definitely good. It's definitely needed. It's necessary. But for some women, it's not even necessary. It's this. When I talk about the biology first approach, I look at it from a perspective of good dick and guidance. Why good dick? Because a woman doesn't have to be in her feminine energy in order for you to rock her socks off when you're giving her head. It does not denote that a woman is in her feminine energy with you. Plenty of masculine women are able to just give a man some pussy. Not get some dick because they want some dick or because they're horny, but they give a man some pussy because he's behaving well or because he triggered her ego by not giving her validation and attention or she's giving him pussy because he's paying her for it, whether that's with emotional security or support or whether that's with financial resources or whether that's with social validation. But what you want is a woman who craves and needs your dick in her body. She needs it. The respect and validation aspect of it is sucking your dick. If she loves to suck your dick, then it's one of those things where pleasing you pleases her. That's a good thing. But if that doesn't if that doesn't coincide with her desire to be penetrated by you and to be dominated by you, then her desire to give you head could just be from a perspective of giving you pleasure to keep you around. So it could be a control thing as well. So sometimes, uh, a woman and I know guys will say when I eat pussy isn't ain't nothing about a woman having control I feel the same way man I get it but you got to understand what I'm saying here for a woman a lot of the times there's a certain level of a lack of intrusiveness that comes from getting their pussy ate a lack of intrusiveness that comes from oral sex that makes it a lot easier for a woman to maintain control she doesn't feel like she's necessarily being pushed out of her masculine energy she just you know enjoying the head that she's getting <laughs> and when it comes to sucking dick then a woman doesn't have to focus on receiving pleasure at the same time. Because femininity is more than just seeking to please. Femininity is also having a capacity to open yourself up to receive pleasure. So when we're looking at the anatomy of it, like when we're looking at conversations I may have had with some gay men before, one thing you'll notice is if you ever see somebody who got turned out in prison and they come back, when they come back from prison, they're usually walking funny. You know, they're walking a little bit different, more like a woman. You know, their wrist is bent. You know, they may be doing things that are more feminine in their presentation and in their body language and in their energy. Men who weren't even, because I know people say that all gay people were raped. I think that there is, that's an unspoken thing that a lot of people do need to address. That trauma is a, is a cause of it for a lot of people. Some people naturally feel that way, but trauma is a cause for a lot of people. But I know some gay people who weren't even raped. But one thing that I have heard before is that for some gay men, when they're in a situation with a man if he's a pure bottom that pure bottom may not even stimulate his own penis see the penis is homologous to the clit focusing on the pleasure of the penis or focusing di primarily on the pleasure of the clitoris is masculine when that's your primal uh, primary focus of where you want to receive pleasure and when you focus that on the skein's gland or the prostate then that pushes you into your feminine energy right so the skein's gland the g-spot you know go about uh, one to three inches it, it shouldn't be no three inches in there but it's usually about one and a half two inches deep a little bit spongier you know it fills up with blood when a woman gets aroused you know you've been there you felt it I hope you have and just the thing about that is that you just have to have certain techniques to give you the ability to hit it like you got to know what kind of dick you have like if you have a really 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 thick dick or if you have a really pronounced head or if you have a very particularly curved dick or if you have like a, a you know a, a, a shorter dick that's just angled at a certain way then it's going to be a lot easier for you to hit the g-spot but the thing about the g-spot is that you know if you have like an average dick or slightly above average dick it's not curved up or nothing like that or curved in a particular angle or your dick is too long to where if you're giving her some violent strokes you're not going to rub up against it with the ridges of your head if your head's not super pronounced then what often happens is it's going to be very difficult for you to give g-spot orgasms unless you're doing something that is very direct uh, one strategy I will give in this particular domain is something I developed myself I call it the Brody technique which is where you put a woman on her back off the side of a, of a couch or a chair or whatever it is uh, somewhere that's high enough 
for you to be just a little bit lower than her when you get on your knees when she's on her back and you put her legs up when you put her legs up over your shoulder or whatever it is or you spread them out what you do is you feel up her pelvis right her pubis mons you fill up that so you go up from her vagina or vulva area you go up to around her pelvic bone or whatever that that plate is in front of right above her vagina area if she is very aroused then it may not hurt but if she's not attracted enough to you or she's not sexually enough in her her mindset at that time then it may be uncomfortable but if she's very aroused then what you can do is make sure your fingernails are cut before you do this as well you dig your fingers behind that plate and then you push her her g-spot down into the head of your dick while you are aiming upwards with your dick and then you, you, you're stroking her g-spot like that so that's one way of going about doing it uh no one else told me about that when i figured that out on my own after i went through some shit that was pretty funny but another thing that they don't talk about is a spot orgasms cervical orgasms and deep spot orgasms a spot orgasms are my bread and butter like i love a spot orgasms uh i probably give more of those than i mean of course i've given I'm not sure if I've given, I probably did give more women clitoral orgasms than a spot orgasms, I think. I'm not sure. But I know that uh, some of the strongest orgasms I've given women a lot of times have been a spot orgasms. Those are the ones that create tears where a woman has never cried before she starts crying during sex. Those are the ones, well, almost all of them can create those convulsions. But, you know, it, it creates different emotions. It creates different emotions and, and feelings of intensity within a woman. So those A spot orgasms are something. There's the cervical orgasms. You know, a woman has to be extremely, extremely aroused and relaxed in order to do that. Uh, you know, and you have to have the equipment for it to give a woman cervical orgasms, deep spot orgasms. The deep spot is even deeper than the cervix because it's on the, the, the posterior fornix, not the anterior fornix where the A spot is. So there's certain anatomy associated with the vagina, with the vulva, with that overall, with, with the female body structure that it's not fucking rocket science and there's even scientists who are out here saying that the g-spot doesn't exist and that female orgasms don't exist and that that not vaginal orgasms don't exist and that all orgasms are clitoral and i believe that this is propaganda in order to keep people from seeing the power of sexuality between a dominant man and a feminine woman they really want to avoid that they really want to avoid it so when we're looking at this different types of scenarios, I believe that this is propaganda. That is one of the only uh, conspiracy theories that I, I really do believe in. And I think that this is one reason why it's really important that men and women learn more about sexuality. Because one way that this can lead to situations that where someone who is not really gay will take a phase of their life to be homosexual or bisexual when that's not really who they are and they may end up staying there. Now, if that's who you are, that's cool, you know, do you? But one way that works is, let's say as a man, the only way that a woman is comfortable or feels that you'll be able to satisfy her sexually is clitorally, right? <laughs> the only styles of sex and the only ways of pleasing her that are gonna get her off when it comes to you dealing with her is for you to have sex with her in the way that a woman would. As in, it's gonna be based on how soft you are, how gentle you are, how sweet you are, how kind you are, how caring you are, how attentive you are to her level of comfort and uh, just giving her clitoral orgasms and a whole bunch of kissing and stuff and making love. And I like that shit. That shit's fun. You know, I, before I got more into the Dom shit, a lot of my sex game was based around, you know, understanding uh, how lesbians have sex because a lot of women have some of their best sex with lesbians. But one thing I realized too is as a man, trying to adopt that style of sex is something that can be to your detriment with a woman and i'm gonna tell you why when you take that style of sex with a woman it can be somewhat off-putting it can be somewhat off-putting and it really depends on which box and which category she puts you in you can take your neediness your feminine energy as a man your desire to please you can take your desire to the chip on your shoulder from years of not feeling like women valued you the way you want to and then you can take that out on a woman and you can have sex with a woman in a variety of ways that can create pleasure, but your energy is something that's so important. And sex is something that permeates outside of only the bedroom to a certain extent. So let's say that you're you're dealing with the individual woman, right? And when you're dealing with this woman, you're you're doing it from this standpoint of trying to have sex with her in a feminine way, 
you're in your feminine energy. You're not going to be able to beat a woman at having sex through your feminine energy. You're not going to win. I mean, it's possible. You know, I've known guys and, uh, you know, I've been told this before too. Like, I know people who, you know, uh, men who are told that by women that they gave them head that was better than some head that a woman's given them. So I've seen that as well. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's not something that's, that's impossible. I've heard the same thing. But just the general rule. The general rule of how the situation works is if the style of sex that you're building the foundation on is one that is feminine in nature with your style as a man, then chances are if that woman isn't having vaginal orgasms, if that woman isn't having multiple orgasms, if that woman isn't being feminine, submissive with you and being receptive to your, your dominance during sex, if she isn't being receptive to that, then how this can often work is that woman will feel like she's having sex with you is a chore or is doing something she doesn't want to do or she's going to feel like she's doing something for you and it's going to be based off of how much you reciprocate the non-sexual things that she values of you and when that is the style of your sexual relationship then at times she's going to be too tired it's going to be connected to her social battery because it's connected to her social battery because she has to repress that desire in order to to deal with you so she can't fully see you like if you're in a relationship she can't fully see you in the lines or in the realms of being that dominant masculine man because it's prematurely integrated and when that happens this is what will happen right this is how it'll go so on the sexual side a woman will eventually think you know what i'm not looking at him to see if he's dominant i'm just looking at him to see if he's pretty if he's handsome then she's like you know what this woman is gorgeous because women are fucking gorgeous. Women are beautiful creatures. And women agree that women are beautiful creatures. So if she's looking at you for the things that she wants from a woman, eventually she's going to realize that women are better for that. Understand what I'm saying? And if that's the perspective that you're dealing with each other from in your sexual relationship, then eventually she's going to get tired of this constant transaction of sex and feeling like she's giving something up of herself to fuck you. And after a while, she's going to get to the point where she's like, you know what, I'd rather just avoid having this vaginal intercourse i'd rather just avoid dealing with all this masculine energy right now and i'd rather just 